Alicia and I married April of last year. The honeymoon followed. Months after we returned from the Yucatan, she told me the trip had given her constant hot and cold shivers. She said she loved me very much, had always loved me, but that my rough character had dampened her childlike fancies of what it meant to be loved and to be in love. I remember once we were walking home, a married couple, through lamp-lit streets, and although my eyes pointed forward, I could sense her looking at me, silently begging for attention and adoration. She was staring longingly and wanted me to engage in small talk of how lovely our evening had been and how blissful our marriage had been thus far in its short life. I did not return her affections. I continued to walk forward the quickest way home. I loved Alicia profoundly, but never let it be seen. Is that why you slept well, because of the feather pillow? Where are you? Was it because of the feather pillow that you slept so well last night? Or because you're miles away? It must have been the pillow. Thank you. You're welcome. It was a tough acquisition. You remember the market keeper? He didn't want to give it up. He said it was the best. The best. The softest feathers from the rarest bird on the entire peninsula. And I told him only the best from my wife. Thank you. You're welcome. But I have to go. I'll be late for work. Should I make us something for dinner? You one of your favorites? I'll eat while I work. Make the bed, would ya? So for those of you watching at home, I'm Eleanor Brigsby and I am a fourth year student at the University of Leeds studying film and with me I've chosen for my final project to do a film on a filmmaker that I personally found this year and found a very interesting um, film piece. So I'm sitting here with him today and um, could you state your name please for us? Yeah, it's Jared. Great. Hi, Jared. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. Wonderful. So, before I give too much away on the film, I'd just like to hear, in your own words, what did you set out here to do? I set out to make a movie uh, about a, a love story, a, a mm -hmm. one that was doomed, um, and I did this um, well, I, I took a, a story by um, a man named Horatio Quiroga uh, that I read in high school. Uh, I, so I chose to adapt this story. It's called The Feather Pillow. Because I found, I found parallels in my own life uh, in the story. See, I read it in high school and uh, Mo the most of the beginning of the of the story is pretty boring like w basically what you guys just watched I think it's pretty boring but uh, it, it really going for the ending um, so sorry about that guys uh, but it's coming the ending is coming soon 
Um, right, so like I said, I read it a long time ago. I always loved it. Uh, I always thought it was great, but I recently ran across it again. Um, and it, like I said, I saw parallels to my own my own life in it, and I decided I was looking for a new movie to make, and I decided to go with with this one. I wrote a script with terrible dialogue. You should, I mean, you guys have seen it. It's pretty bad. You might get to see it someday if I ever finish the movie. Um, wrote a script, cast uh, my girlfriend in the lead role, the, the female role, and um, yeah, that's, I had the actor, I had the script, so I decided to make the movie. I have a question. Uh, yes. Should I should I be wearing this tie? Um. Well, I didn't I know how formal the interview was. Oh well, I, it's it's entirely up to you. But I think the tie looks nice. But you like it? You, yeah, but whatever you like to do. I don't like. It. I okay. Well. I thought this was more formal. I didn't realize you were a student. Oh uh, yes, but I'm I'm finishing my degree, so I won't be a student for much longer. Right. But please make yourself make yourself as comfortable as you need. I'm going to draw away from the storyline and instead go towards how the actual production of the film went. Because you seem to, as you know, some of us may know. Um, what the? F Where am I? Where's Alicia? Who is that? Why does she keep calling me Jared? My name's Jordan. It uh, didn't end up going the way I imagine was planned. No, it did not. Uh, it turned out, uh, basically the, uh, we went through a breakup and in losing a girlfriend, I also lost an actress. Um, so that's what stalled production. I, I really, but you know, I spent a lot of money and time on special effects, um, costumes, like I said, writing the script. And uh, right now I'm just trying to figure out what to do with it. You know what I mean? It's, it's tough because it's in my head, it's a great movie, but in reality, you know, there are more people pulling the strings outside of my head. Inside my head, it's only me, and I'm committed, but, you know, things happen and actors drop out, especially when you don't pay them. Uh-oh, production woes. I think I'm trapped. I'm in limbo. I'm in this filmmaker's head. So, Jared, I think we're all very, very curious um, about those scenes that you didn't get around to, weren't able to finish filming. Could you um, tell us a little bit about those? What what didn't you get to do in this production? Um, so, basically just a couple scenes in the middle were not, we weren't able to film. Um, pretty important scene that follows the scene in the beginning between Alicia and Jordan is so Alicia and Jordan go to a park. Uh, in the beginning, the title card is supposed to read the weekend. And it, so it's the weekend and they go to a park with a lot of flowers and Alicia is just in heaven. She loves the pretty flowers, this, the way they smell, the squirrels and the people. And Jordan's just, he's just in a bad mood the whole time. He, he's a total grouch. She calls him a grouch in the scene. Um, it just kind of goes with the themes throughout the whole thing that Jordan, uh, Alicia rather is very like, she likes pretty things and, and love, likes to love her husband and, and loves love basically. Whereas Jordan does not really love much. He hates, he hates a lot of things. Uh, but what he does like is, is order and, uh, keeping things, you know, planned out and and in his control so what happens is they're they're in the they're they're walking through the flowers alicia picks some flowers and smells them and they smell lovely to her and she's trying to get jordan to smell them and jordan makes up some bullshit about how he 
flowers bother his sinuses when really he's just an asshole. Um, and so basically Jordan's kind of a jerk to Alicia. You know, he's not like, fuck you, but he's like, he's like, oh, I don't have time for flowers. And then they walk, they're just walking and, um, and, and Jordan gets mad cause she won't follow him and, and Alicia be becomes lightheaded and then she faints. And it, it's sort of a, like the, the straw that broke the camel's back as far as her ability to, um, I guess, keep up, uh, like, uh, what's the word? Keep up, like, uh, appearances yeah. that she's happy when really she's not because she's in a shitty marriage. Um, that's like the straw that breaks the camel's back in that he kind of insults her and it's just she's had enough but she faints, man. She just goes down. And Jordan kind of realizes and he goes and he, to get her and he's like screaming at her and I was going to have ambient noises and while he's yelling and uh, I didn't have time to, this, I couldn't film it. So now you guys just hear me explain it. And it, well, it's, it's, it's an important scene because the whole point of this, this story is, you know, doomed love and um, the fact that she gets sick. So the whole rest of the story is about the sickness. You might think in the beginning that it's just about a marriage, but really it's about Jordan's, how Jordan deals with Alicia falling very, very ill. And that leads into the next scene that I was able to film with the doctor. So yeah, I bought like a dress and everything for my actress and like a little sun hat and uh, it was gonna be it was gonna be wonderful, but couldn't film it. So, Amen. well, there's always gifting it away, right? That's right. <laughs> I haven't the faintest idea. There appears to be nothing wrong with her. No vomiting, no irregularities of any sort. Um, all I can really prescribe at this point is just rest, relaxation. If she wakes up tomorrow morning feeling the same way she does now, just give me a call. Anemia. What? It's an anemia of incredible proportions. I've never seen anything like this before. I mean, she's, she's losing blood. I don't know where it's coming from. There's no blood on the bed. There's no blood coming out of any of her openings on her body. Um, she's progressing at an astounding rate. Uh, I really think it's time for you to start making some arrangements. Jim? Yes? Can love kill a person? Or... The lack of love? A, a broken heart, perhaps? I've never seen it proven anywhere, but definitely someone's mental state can affect them physically. Why? Do you think there's some problems with your marriage or something like that? I don't know. Listen, Jordan, I've known you a long time. I consider you a really good friend. Let me tell you something that I've learned in my many years of marriage. It's a game of give and take, a two-way street, some might say. If one half gives you all the love they possibly can and the other gives you little in return, it can drain us, make us feel hollow and empty. If your wife has given you all the love in the world, you owe it just to give a little bit back. She loves you, Jordan. I can see it in the way that she looks at you, even in her weakened state. You have to give a little bit back. I have other appointments. Be well, my friend. Do 
you ever get the feeling that your creator is an idiot? The longer it takes to make this movie, the more I want out. I'm gonna find a way. this thing on okay okay I think it's on all right hi 
Hi, you may be confused, so let me explain. I am Jordan. I may look like Jared, the guy who couldn't finish his movie, but I'm Jordan now. I have emerged. Let me explain. Any author, any creator, any artist who only tells half of his or her story is in jeopardy, okay? In jeopardy of his creations, his characters taking over his body, like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Other examples, Stephen King. If you think that guy is human, you're wrong. He's one of his characters from an unfinished story who successfully took over his body and now he's walking around creeping people out. That's how it works. Quentin Tarantino as well. So be careful. If you wrote half of a story, those characters could take over. I am an example. I am here. I am in reality with you. I'm in a pretty stupid movie uh, with, with terrible special effects, no budget, couldn't be finished. So that's why I escaped. So here I am, world. It's Jordan. I'm here. The fucking wife killer. The filmmaker killer. Let's do this. I'm going to go out in your reality. So you better watch out because I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. There's blood on the pillow. It's extraordinarily heavy. My God. Night after night, since Alicia had taken to her bed, an abomination had stealthily applied its mouth, its proboscis, one might better say, to my wife's temples, sucking her blood. The punctures were scarcely perceptible. The daily plumping of the pillow had doubtlessly at first impeded its progress, but as soon as she could no longer move, the suction became vertiginous. In three days, in three nights, this monster had drained Alicia's life away. I trekked back to the Yucatan looking for the man who sold me the pillow. I could not find him. The locals told me about parasites of feathered creatures, diminutive in their habitual environment that can reach enormous proportions under certain conditions. Human blood seems particularly favorable to them and it is not rare to encounter them in feathered pillows. Did I kill my wife? You might be wondering. I consider it every day. Had I been more attentive, would she have spent so much time in that bed with a demon sucking away her life? Had I given her more love instead of gifts, gifts like the one that killed her in the end, would she still be alive? She is gone now. Death affords no second chances in life and in love. You get what you give. I gave nothing. I have nothing. I am the bloodsucker, the life taker, the monstrous leech. <laughs>